Hi guys, Ramon here from The Guitar Show. We're going to be talking about Eric Clapton and his guitars. So Eric was born 30th of March 1945 in Ripley, Surrey, England. Eric actually received his first guitar um, on his 13th birthday and it was an acoustic guitar made in Germany called a Hoya guitar. So this Hoya acoustic was actually bought by his grandmother and it was purchased in 1958 from Bell Musical Instruments. I'm going to read you a quote now from Eric Clapton about this particular guitar. An odd instrument. It looked like a Spanish guitar, but instead of nylon, it had steel strings. It was a curious combination, and for a novice, it was really quite painful to play. Of course, it was a case of putting the cart before the horse, because I couldn't even tune the guitar, let alone playing one. Eric actually wrote his name Lord Eric on the front of this guitar. Eric bought this guitar at a flea market um, in Kingston on Thames when he was 15 years old. To once again quote Eric Clapton, I saw a very odd looking guitar hanging up on one of the stalls. It was an acoustic, but it has a very narrow shaped body, almost like a medieval English guitar. And there was a painting of a naked woman stuck on the back of it. Intuitively, I knew it was good. I picked it up and though I didn't play it because I didn't want anybody to hear, it felt perfect, like a dream guitar. So these guitars were probably made around 1915 to 1920. And they're really quality pieces with uh, woods such as Brazilian rosewood being used. So um, definitely a guitar to check out. Unfortunately, his brother actually sat on the guitar and destroyed it. So his next guitar was an electric guitar. So Eric Clapton's first electric guitar was in fact a 1962 K Jazz 2 model. Eric's, ma um, Eric's grandmother actually bought it on a higher purchase scheme, which meant that uh, she had to pay it off weekly or monthly. He'd actually spotted Alexis Cornair playing one of these guitars and that kind of influenced to get one. And as Clapton said himself, it was kind of like a copy, a cheap copy of a Gibson 335, which at the time would have cost over £100, whereas um, the K guitar cost about £10. So Eric used this guitar just before joining the Yardbirds around 1962, and he was actually in a band called The Roosters. An interesting sort of detail about this guitar is that the block inlays are a little bit more ornate than the normal models inlays, and also there's a different pickguard. So if you know any other K models which would fit this description more accurately, then uh, please let me know. So Clapton was with the uh, Roosters from January until August 1963. In October of that year, Clapton did a seven gig stint with Casey Jones and the Engineers. After that, in October 1963, Clapton joined the Yardbirds. Let's discuss one of the reasons why Eric is actually called Slowhand. So, Yardbirds rhythm guitarist Chris Dredger recalled that whenever Clapton broke a string during a concert, he would stay on stage and replace it. The English audiences would wait out the delay by doing what is called a slow hand clap. Clapton's nickname of Slowhand thus came from a pun of slow hand clapping that ensued when Clapton stopped playing while he replaced his string. Eric's next guitar was a 1963 Fender Telecaster and it was Eric's main recording guitar and for doing concerts during the Yardbirds era. The guitar actually belonged to the Yardbirds management and after Eric left the band he had to give it back and uh, actually Jeff Beck who replaced Eric actually took on the guitar himself. This is something that Jeff Beck has actually publicly stated but I don't think there's any photos around of Jeff Beck actually playing the guitar so if you know of any that would be great if you could put it in the uh, comments section. The following is actually a direct quote from Eric Clapton. I had a Telecaster in the Yardbirds from day one. I used light gauge strings with a very thin first string, which made it easier to bend the notes. I'm now going to quote Jeff Beck's recollection of, of this red Telecaster. I had to use that because I didn't have a guitar when I joined. I'd already sold my first Fender, a Strat, but I got rid of the red Tele soon after. It was a terrible guitar. John Owen, the rhythm guitarist of my previous group, the Tridents, had a Telecaster. I would ogle that thing, and I spent more time playing it than he did. Then I borrowed it and never gave it back. So as you can see, guys, Jeff Beck actually says it was a terrible guitar when he received it and uh, he got rid of it. He sold it. So if you guys have any information about this red telly, please let me know. In March 1965, Clapton and the Yardbirds had their first major hit, For Your Love. Um, much to the annoyance of Clapton, who was a devotee to the blues and not commercial success, he left the Yardbirds on the day that For Your Love went public. Clapton joined John Mayall and the Blues Breakers in April 1965. With the money that Eric had saved up from playing with the Yardbirds, Eric bought a 1964 Gibson ES-335 TDC serial number 67473 from Denmark Street. Clapton bought the 335 brand new and used it towards the end of his time with the Yardbirds around 1964 and 1965. It's quite possible he may have used a 335 to record Good Morning Little Schoolgirl as the uh, tone was a bit of a thicker tone and less sort of thin as on the other previous recordings. 
there's a little bit of a controversy about this guitar actually the actual purchase date of 1964 has been disputed by none other than jerry donahue the great um country picker um i'm going to quote him now I sold Eric his Red 335 not more than two weeks before his final performance with Cream at the Royal Albert Hall. It was one of my main highlights of working at Selma's. We had a nice conversation during the process, and just as we were wrapping it up, Eric mentioned the upcoming shows in a manner that felt as though he was about to offer me a complimentary ticket or two. But I told him I'd already bought tickets, and he seemed to be pleased. You can imagine my amazement and joy later as I sat watching Cream come on to the Royal Albert Hall stage. Eric was a 335 strapped on. He played that guitar for the entire evening. I was filled with pride. So guys, when you think about it, um, Eric Clapton did actually use the Red 335 at the Cream concert, which does confirm part of Jerry Donahue's story. So what do you think? Do you think that um, Eric Clapton had another 335 in, that he bought in 1964 for the Yardbirds and then he purchased another one um, for later use in Cream? Or do you think that the uh, 335 that was in the Yardbirds actually belonged to Chris Dredger, the other guitar player? Personally, I think that um, Eric Clapton did actually purchase this 335 in the Yardbirds in 1964. Okay, so the next guitar that Eric Clapton purchased was in fact a either a 1959 or a 1960 Gibson Les Paul Sunburst guitar. Eric purchased the guitar in 1965 in Lou Davis's guitar shop on Charing Cross Road in London. Okay, you notice I said 59 or 60. That's because although Eric Clapton has stated that it had a very thin neck, without the serial number, it's going to be really, really difficult to uh, give the exact um, year. And also there was actually a transition from one year to another. So it wasn't like in January 1960, every single Les Paul had a thin neck. So these are real famous photos taken from the Blues Breakers session in April 1966 at Decca Studios in London. This is where they recorded their first album called John Mel and the Blues Breakers. And it's kind of called the Beano album because you can see Eric Clapton reading uh, a Beano comic. Hence, that's the reason for this guitar being termed the Beano Burst. You'll notice from the photos that Clapton actually removed the covers from the uh, humbuckers. And you can see that it has a double cream path in the neck position and a black path in the bridge position. It also had the uh, machine heads changed over to Grover's. So around springtime of 1966, um, just after the sessions for the Beano album, Clapton, Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker began rehearsals um, for what would later be known as Cream. As Cream prepared to tour um, in the summer of 1966, the Beano burst was actually stolen, and that would have been sometime in June or early July. Okay, there's a few sort of wild speculations about where this guitar could be, and some have even pointed to the ex White Snake guitarist Bernie Marsden as its current owner. So, guys, no one really knows the truth about the whereabouts of this guitar. Some have speculated that they've seen it in people's collections and so forth, but personally, I think it's still either destroyed or it's under somebody's bed or in an attic in England, or maybe it's in a private um, collection somewhere. But who knows? But one thing is for sure, for me personally, this is the best guitar, um, well, the best Les Paul that I've ever heard. I mean, coupled with um, Eric Clapton's technique, he's really fist playing at the time, and the Marshall JTM 45, you know, you put all those things together, and the Celestian speakers, and it is really the best tone I've ever heard from a Les Paul. Um, if you check out the uh, Blues Breakers track, Stepping Out, I think that really does sum up the tone of the Beano Burst. It really is, um, you know, like I said, just absolutely amazing, toneful instrument. I've noticed a lot of people on forums are kind of looking at the photos of the Beano Burst, and they're kind of like saying, you know, is, is it a plain top or is it a figured top? Um, and the colour of it, but it's really, really hard to kind of distinguish the actual real details and the, the kind of fingerprint of the grain on the top. Any information you guys might have, you know, do you know the guy that stole it from Clapton and still has that guitar in England? Do you know him? If you do, let us know in the comments, you know, because that's going to be real interesting information. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching. This is part one of a part three series. We're actually going to release part two tomorrow. And on the consecutive day, we're going to release part three. I just want to say guys thanks a million for all your amazing comments your feedback and also your anecdotes your memories um of that that kind of era you know which i'm kind of like um doing hendrix clapton jimmy page peter green so it's kind of around the 60s you know and uh, just got some wonderful sort of comments about that era so you know thanks a million guys if you can keep that coming that's fantastic and any details that i've missed it's always good to get your input on that also, don't forget to uh, subscribe, like, and share because that really helps the channel. 
This is Ramon from The Guitar Show, signing out. Take care, guys.